A democratic republic of sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville host Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. Welcome back into the Sportsocracy free agent grade time. And we are talking about the AFC North. The AFC North next up here. And it's uh, this, this one should be easy. There are a couple of teams in this division that haven't done a whole lot. In and the then there's two market. teams that have done a shitload, and I feel <laughs> markedly different about the two of them. Yes, they have uh, They have done a great job. So let's get into the free agency class for the Cincinnati Bengals. The Cincinnati Bengals have added Trey Hendrickson and Riley Reef. They've also added some weapons to the secondary that I'm very, very high on. Mike Hilton coming over from the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers and Chidobi Awuzi coming from Dallas. Okay, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Which would have been better? Uh, to have William Jackson, who they lost, mm -hmm. and let walk, or Mike Hilton and, and a woozy? Which is better? Oh, I think it's uh, keeping William Jackson. There you go. Uh, yeah. Well, you paid more money to not do that. So I'm going to, <laughs> uh, I'm going to hammer you for that. Okay. Also, uh, who was my favorite pass rusher in this class? Carl Lawson. Okay, you lost him. Who did I think was the most overrated pass rusher in this in this free agency class? Uh, Trey Hendrickson. There it is. <laughs> I just the Bengals to me feel like they're rearranging deck furniture on the Titanic. I mean, it's it, I, I don't get it. I, Riley Reef is fine. Mm -hmm. You know I, I would have greatly preferred you just draft Penny Sewell and roll on, but now it seems like they won't do that, and somebody's going to get a value in Sewell when Cincinnati could have just taken him at five. Mm -hmm. Could have used that to hold on to William Jackson. Could have used that to hold on to Carl Lawson. I mean, now Lawson may have wanted to move on. I, I don't know. But Hendrickson, to me, just strikes me as a guy that's a one-year flash in the pan. I understand he had the second most sacks in the league. But he was like 20th in pass rush win rate, mm -hmm. which is the biggest identifier of year-to-year -year success. And you let the guy, the, the guy you let go was third. Uh, and you gave Hendrickson a year longer at the same money, which makes no sense to me. Yeah. I give them a B-plus for this uh, free agent haul and, and basically f also for their offseason and what they lost. Allowing aging stars A.J. Green and Geno Atkins to leave, um, I think helped this team. And I think the defense is going to be better than it was last year. I think the offensive line will be better, but I thought that with Sewell and, and moving mm -hmm. you know, uh, Jonah Williams over to the right side, I just don't get it. I, I, the, the things you added, you had the ability to add in the draft, which is always what I prefer. Mm -hmm. I, you use free agency to fill holes, especially when you're a young team like this. I, I, I didn't like it. I don't like it. And moving forward, I think this team is actually worse than they started. Really? I do. Okay. Agree to disagree on that one. Let's talk about the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns are... They're doing some stuff that makes this team pretty freaking scary. I know I uh, I like to give out, you know, generous grades, but there's no way that they were getting anything less than an A from me on this offseason haul. John Johnson and Troy Hill coming over immediately makes the secondary of this defense better. He's an elite coverage safety, uh, or John Johnson is an mm -hmm. elite coverage safety. Uh, I, I like Troy Hill as the second corner on the other side of Denzel Ward. John Johnson's the home run swing. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you the thing that gets undervalued here is how much depth they added to the D-line. Mm -hmm. With Tack McKinley, uh, Malik, Malik Jackson, Jackson, Anthony Walker, mm -hmm. that's a lot of pieces that you can interchange. And, and the defense is going to be tremendous. And don't be surprised if they add Zayvon Collins in the draft. It's, to me, it's either Zayvon Collins or Christian Barmore. And now they have added so much depth around that D-line that mm -hmm. I won't be shocked if they prefer to go Zayvon Collins. Mm-hmm. You add him to that defense, it's going to be even scarier. Um, they haven't done they haven't done anything on the offensive side of the ball other than re-sign Rashard Higgins, uh, who is a who's a uh, you know one of Baker Mayfield's mm -hmm. favorite targets, which mm -hmm. makes all the sense in the world. Mm -hmm. I hate Cleveland with every fiber of my soul, <laughs> but I can't hate on their offseason. To me, they've had one of the best free agency periods of any team in the NFL. I agree with that. Let's talk about the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I, I I couldn't really give them a grade. I had to give them an incomplete on this because they do still have some money to spend, and I believe that they're going to be in on a wide receiver. The latest talk is that they're 
they're bringing guys in. They're talking to guys. I think T.Y. Hilton's one of them that they're they're interviewing and you know testing out. They added Kevin Zeitler though, and that that's an addition to your offensive line that doesn't hurt. Well, they bought low on Zeitler. He had the worst year of his career last year. And here's the thing: you got him so cheap that. First of all, as bad as he was last year, he would have been an improvement over what you played with Marshall Yonda, you know, late retiring last year. So that's an improvement to me. I gave him a C plus, but my biggest knock is that you let Yannick and Gakwe, who you traded a third round pick for, you know, and he, you got what eight games out of him. Mm -hmm. You let him walk for nothing. Judon walked for nothing. And, and I understand comp picks and, and all of those things. I understand what you're trying to do. I have no qualm with that. But you lost a lot. And you're getting ready to pay Lamar Jackson, and it's going to be really hard to recoup assets like that. I can't reward that. You know, I do applaud them for not overpaying because Ngakwe did not fit in this scheme, and I'm not huge on Judon. That's the reason I didn't kill them for this. Mm -hmm. But it does bother me that you gave up a draft asset for a guy that you didn't have for that long, for, for long enough, in my opinion. Right. Now, you'll get one back. You know, it could be a three, it could be a four. So you'll get that back, but it's... Two years down the line. Mm -hmm. And the thought process could be that's after we paid Lamar. You know, we could use the pick more then because then you're kicking the can down the road on the rookie scale. Mm -hmm. All You see I'm speaking out both sides of my oh, mouth yeah. in Baltimore? That's why they're a C plus. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't do anything that's going to cripple you. Zeitler was high upside, and I think they will add a couple other guys. I know they've talked to Sammy Watkins. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow Sammy Watkins signing with the Baltimore Ravens would be uh, the thing that made the most and least sense at the same time. <laughs> why the least? Baltimore buys low on guys, uh, but they don't tend to buy low on broken guys. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's a weird signing to me, but I I would not be shocked if Sammy Watkins. You consider Sammy there. Watkins broken? Uh, you talk about people that are injury prone. Yeah, Sammy Watkins is injury prone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sammy Watkins blows a bubble in his chewing gum and blows out his knee. <laughs> and pulls his quad or yeah. you know yeah. breaks a toenail or some shit. Right. I'm not a Sammy Watkins. I'm not a Sammy Watkins fan personally. But Baltimore seems to like him. So. All right, the defending champions, the defending champions of the AFC North, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Of course, famously, they had the late season collapse after starting out 11-0 and on the year. They got their ass kicked by the Cleveland Browns in the playoffs. And there was a lot of questions going into the offseason. And, uh, you know, I give them a C just because you I mean, they kept Big Ben, which I think was not the greatest of moves, but what were you going to do? Juju Smith-Schuster coming back is a big plus for them. And you got him on a one-year proven mm -hmm. deal. You know, I gave him a B because they didn't do anything that's going to hammer them further long-term, and you found a way to stay competitive for another year. This is a team to me that's borderline playoff team. I, they're not a Super Bowl contender in any stretch to me. Mm -mm. And I'm giving them a B on the pretense that I think they're going to bring back Ali Villanueva. Uh, you got Zach Banner back on a pretty team-friendly deal, too, at, at nine and a half. I, I just look at everything they've done and going, it's, it's all kept you competitive. So, you know, I'm not one of those that just tries to hang on to being nine and seven with every fiber of my being, but this was a very good team up until Ben's arm fell off last year. Now they need to add a running back in the draft because James, the, the combination of Anthony McFarlane and James Conner, and it, it was just a disaster mm -hmm. last year. Uh, having Banner back will help that, I, I believe. And having somebody like Najee Harris, who I'm very high on and very high on with the Steelers, would make this a pretty complete offseason that would make them a contender in this division. Yeah, right now their number one on the running back depth chart is Benny Snell. I don't see that Woof. going forward. <laughs> but to me, after you take everything to account, all of the moves that have been made so far in this offseason, it appears to me that this is the Browns' division to lose. I would say so. They're the best team in the division, to me, without a doubt. Cincinnati needs to have a very strong draft, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know what they're going to do at five. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Kyle Pitts is my number one overall prospect, and it's not close. If they take him at five, that gives Burrow another weapon. But then you have the problem of, well, what is he? Because I don't really think he's a tight end, and I never have. He's certainly not an in-line tight end. Mm -hmm. Could he play a role, you know, somewhat like Travis Kelsey, George Kittle? Yeah, but he's not nearly as good a blocker as either one of them. I actually look at him as a receiver. I think he is a receiver in this league. That's where I think Cincinnati is headed. 
But somebody in front of them might have something to say about that. <laughs> Your New York Jets, man. Could be the Jets, could be the Dolphins. Right. Uh, I, Kyle Pitt, it's Kyle Pitts or bust now for, for Cincinnati since they went and got Riley Reef. Mm -hmm. Unless they think Jonah Williams is going to play guard, which is, that would be an aggressive strategy to me. But Yeah. I, I had Penny Sewell to the Bengals from, from the day the season ended. Yeah. So, you know, that, that part doesn't make any sense to me. The Ravens and the Steelers have kept their own guys and not pushed things any further down the road. And that's why they got semi-favorable grades, even though they didn't do that much. I mm -hmm. think those are the second and third best teams in this division, and they both could be playoff teams. Yeah. Yep. All right. The, uh, the AFC North is in the books. We will continue all of our free agency grades, division by division, right here in the Sportsocracy. Be sure to hit like and subscribe so you know when the rest of those come out. We are in the Wicked Weed studio, wickedweedbrewing.com. Drink different. I'm Tank Spencer, and he's Jeremy Green, and we'll see you next time.